We've got a new 3D printer to unbox and check out. What do you think? Do you like it? Do you like it? What do you think? Yes, it was damaged. Should we open it? Yeah, I agree. All right, today we're gonna look at this AnyCubic Cobra S1 combo, or as some have called it, the poor man's X1 Carbon. This also has the multicolor filament thingy-mabobber up top like the AMS. We'll see if it's any good. For freedom to make. Let's see what we got. Come on out. It's actually packaged up pretty nicely with these nice plastic corner protectors so that the drop kicks from the post office didn't do too much damage. Oh, this is looking pretty good. Lots of protective packaging. Nice little pop-up screen. All right, it looks like the Ace Pro. That is what the AMS situation up top is called. And China, here we go, some English stuff. All right, let's take a look at this. So, let's remove the cover, throw the trash on the ground. I mean, this printer seems built pretty well. I mean, I'm no, I'm no professional grade 3D printer. I've always just used Ender series printers, so nothing fancy, but they've, it's been great. I mean, printing tools and one-time use things that I might need or little gadgets or mounts or gizmos, I enjoy it. So this should be an upgrade over what I'm used to. More peels. That comes out. Looks like this comes out next. I mean, this thing's pretty cool looking. Quality looks pretty decent. It isn't glass on the front, but um, at least it won't shatter. So there's that. I like this little screen. Okay, so I think this plastic piece must come out. All right, a few screws later, and this little piece of plastic is coming out of the bottom to reveal the print bed. Looks like we've got a PEI build plate here. Decent size piece of spring steel. Next step is to free the print head. It's got a zip tie and a piece of cardboard. We're kind of testing how easy it is to set this printer up from opening to the first print. Woo! Okay. Ooh, look at that guy. We gotta put a googly eye on him. He is begging for a googs. The next step, unlock the print bed. So back down here, there are these screws. It's just bolting this whole contraption to the floor for shipping and whatevs. Don't forget there is one more red arrow in the back here, locking the print bed to the ground or to the base, I guess, of itself. These instructions are actually pretty good, so I don't think you're gonna have to worry too much about the setup. Shows you exactly what to cut exactly the three screws you need to pull out to unlock the print bed, all that sort of stuff. It also comes with this little box full of trinkets. Let's see what we've got here. So it looks like this is the little four into one filament thing for the multicolors. We've got a couple power cords, one I assume for the printer and the other one for the AMS, a flash drive. Um, hopefully there's some cool test prints on this thing. We'll have to check it out. An activated carbon filter for that spot in there uh, so you can breathe good. Let's see, oh, this looks pretty boring. Oh, look, there's lubricant, but it's the non-edible kind, sorry. If you wanna walk around this machine a little bit, we've got a USB port here. This is the little tilt screen, I guess we're, where we're gonna control prints, so that's cool. On the back side here, this is a little filament tube where the input goes. We've got a couple of ports here to plug in some of those accessories. And the poop chute. So when it switches colors, it does a little bit of extra blend so that it can get the new color pushed through and the old color pushed out. And then that little section of waste comes out the poop chute. Power, power switch, that's about it. Now, looking at the AMS itself, I mean Ace Pro itself, we've got our one, two, three, and four spots for the different colored filament to go in. Some tubely tubelies. That's about all this. This also doubles as a filament dryer, which is kind of cool. On the back of this, it's got the one, two, three, and four. That's where it comes out. Pass twice. Neat. I think that is just gonna set right on top here. And then, whoop, bloop, bloop. Pull this out. 
put it in. It seems to be larger than this little hole. It's like me trying to get jeans on. Yeah, better-ish. Okay, now as far as the Ace Pro goes, I think I'm just gonna be putting it right about meow. You guys couldn't see that. Meow. Now let's hook it up. Comes with this little cable to connect the six pin from one side to the four pin of the other, it appears. So four pin into the printer, we can do that. It's got one of those latch, latching little things so you can't put it on wrong, but I will still try. Make it pretty. One power cord's gonna go on the Ace Pro. Other one's gonna go down here at the bottom corner of the actual printer. You could have figured that out. I didn't need to tell you, but. Okay, so this actually looks like this. They call this the filament hub in the instructions, the little four into one merger thing. And it looks like it goes here. Has a little baggie for filament hub, two long screws. Now I'm guessing this thing goes here. Oh, and I broke it. Cool, I'm really good at things. But luckily it goes back in. Ow, and you can pinch your finger. Okay, there's that. And then it comes with these four doohickeys that go from up here to the underside of that. Well, and it looks like it, they just push in. You don't do any little locking collar things. Up here, it has those little blue collars. All four little Teflon tubes are hooked up and they go right on into that guy at the bottom. Oh, gotta plug this in. Yeah, we should do that. Does nothing go in that? Maybe that's if you connect it, another one, so you could have two of the aces? I'm guessing that's what it is. Power. Run around to the other side quickly. Ooh, okay. It's booting up. It just says, any cubic. All right, I see the lights are on on the uh, Ace Pro. I keep wanting to call it an AMS, and I'm gonna not do that anymore. I paid for this printer with my own doubloons, so I can say whatever I want about it, because no one sends me anything. But if you're out there and you're wanting to sponsor the channel, you know, let me know, hit me up. Okay, it's still just saying its name, which is cool and all. And let's do a clock wipe until this is finished. So we're back and it's still just sitting here. I've waited a while, thinking it was just, you know, first time boot up, calibration, something else, but it is not doing anything, not responding to any touch. So I'm guessing mine might be stuck in some little boot loop. Let's try to power it back off and on again. Okay, so now they're both off. It said to power this on first, and then I'm gonna power this on next, which is the opposite direction of the on here, because, yeah. Oh, look at that, this time we got a little loady. Oh my goodness, so much better, okay. All right, this time we actually loaded up to some sort of interface, so if you get that, power cycle it, try again. English, next. Global or China? Global. Very, very touch sensitive. So just right off the bat, I can see that the printer is on. There's a little bit of light shining from the very top down here. I don't know if you can see that on my hand, which is cool, but I cannot hear the printer. What I can hear is the not an AMS Ace Pro. It's got a fan in the back that seems fairly loud, not the quietest of sorts, but so far no noise out of this bigger box. On the app, it didn't, show is online. So maybe I have to get through this first little piece. Um, it did add the printer, so it does show up now in my account. And here's a little guide. It says, insert the U-disc. Okay, self-test, it says up there. Self-test. So I'm assuming it's gonna go through and, and make sure it knows it's X, Y, Z stops, all that sort of stuff, can, can cycle all the motors. Yeah, so it's just gonna go through this uh, auto start self-calibration situation. I'll put you back on with when this is done because boring. All right, we got a new cool interface here. Let's see, get that glare out of your way. To test this thing out, I'm gonna get some random assortments of different brands and things like that. So an AnyCubic uh, filament that has the RFID sensor in so it should know exactly what it is right away and detect the color and all that jazz. And then I'll put in some other random brands and just set them um, manually so it knows what color it is. So the first up is this guy right here. So this is an AnyCubic branded filament with the RFID in it. 
Um, it's red. I'm gonna load up red, white, and blue to be patriotic, and also because my son wants a Captain America shield printed, so yeah. The white, we've got Elegoo. They make printers and things too, but we've got their filament because it was cheap. And then for the blue, I already had this opened inland, P uh, not PLA plus, tough PLA, which is kind of the same thing. For the fourth roll, we're gonna load it up with this Polymaker um, Polylite PLA Pro, other more different blue. That's a nice looking color red. That'll do great for Mr. America. So I'm just setting it right there and then I'm going to, oh, so as I start to feed it in, I saw the light light up. I'm gonna keep giving it some, some stuff. Oh, there we go, it grabbed it. If you look on the screen here, it knows it's red. So it's already changed it all. Set that in, okay, it looks like it's lighting up. Here, let me give it a nice cut, fresh tip. There we go. I guess I did something right that time. I can set the color, it is white. And then material, okay, now I can set it. It's PLA, yeah. It looks like that's as good as it gets. Oh, PLACF, so it does support carbon fiber? Okay, so that's in there. And if I go three, I can say material is PLA, okay. And color is uh, blue, I guess. Interstellar violet, yes. Uh, and now we're loaded, that's kind of neat. Test model, this is what I'm trying to find, so check that out. So we've got a Benchy, We've got a Benji PLA, a shark bottle opener. We've got some, a dinosaur, a little fish. That contraption? Well, of course, I wanna do this contraption. Click start printing and see what happens. So it seems like we need that one to be there. Okay. And then maybe I'll put this blue here and then I'll put this red here. Cool. Start printing. So far, so good. And yeah, so I just hit, hit go. It says preparing leveling. I'm assuming it's just gonna heat up. Yes, I can see it's heating up the bed as well as the hot end. Standard PLA. Um, yeah, I didn't do anything to this as far as like, you know, calibration, tweaking, fiddling. It's right out of the box. So I'm gonna be impressed if it, if it can kind of auto calibrate itself and just start working. Now that's kind of actually going uh, we have an estimation. It looks like it's 0.1% and it is 14 hours and five minutes from completion. Wow. So to catch its droppings, I'm gonna just put this little plastic tote back here. There we go. And so things should come out of that chute right into there and we can kind of see what, a, what this print is gonna make as far as waste. While I'm back here, check that out. It's like doing, it's doing some things. See the bright blue is only fed to about there. Oh! I'm assuming it's not gonna do this until it changes colors again. But what do I know? It's going, it's making a circle in its first color. Is this really gonna take 14 hours? I guess we'll see, what time is it? It is 5.06 p.m. We'll see how long that takes. Okay, so it is switching colors right now. So I think this is its first color switch. So let's see if we can capture this in the moment. Would you look at that? So it's switching from that darker blue right now to the white. So you can see how it purges out a little bit, a decent amount really, so that when it's printing white, it's actually all white and not this off or sky blue color, which is a mix of everything. Robots. All right, and 17 hours and seven minutes later, it's complete. So let's take a look at this. Check that out. I don't know what it is, but let's look at it. And it just completed, so it hasn't even cooled down to where it's gonna pop off this plate nice and easily yet, but I can pull that build plate out to speed up the process. Check it out. Upon um, initial investigation, 
things look really good. Something about this though, is like you saw, it took 17 hours to do this. There we go. Pops right off. Oh, oh, that's what this is. Well, that's cool. Yeah, that is pretty neat. And as far as the print quality goes, it's looking pretty good. The seams are a bit um, visible. Look at that red one. One thing I didn't like is it was a little bit loud, switching filaments and things like that. The um, Ace Pro, a bit loud. The printer itself is not the loudest thing. Um, it's pretty quiet and it's, it was very fast. And you wouldn't think so, given the 17 hour print time for this little thing. But after I started it, I realized that every single layer, it's got to change the colors. I mean, we got four colors per layer. So it's got to do three tool changes or color changes, which is kind of nuts and sounds like a big waste, especially because every time it does that, it goes over to the poop chute, drops a load, and then gets the new one loaded up and all that jazz. So the big question is, we have a print that's about this big. Let's go around back and see what it looks like. Look at this patriotic pile of printer feces. That is a ton. I now need to figure out how I recycle this or remelt them into filament that I can use as supports or something because that is massive. A ton of waste for that little toy. I think it would make a lot more sense to do this when every single layer of your print doesn't have multiple changes. So the next thing I'm gonna print is a Captain America coaster for my son, cause that's what he wanted. And it will mainly be red and just a few of the surfaces will be painted. And it should only have a handful of changes instead of gobs. All right, and for that America themed coaster, for my son that I was talking about. This is how it turned out, which is really cool. And it was actually very easy. I downloaded this from, I think, Thingiverse, and it wasn't multicolored, but in the little slicer, you can just select different zones and just paint them. And it turned out really good. So that's a cool, that's a cool coaster. And uh, we'll have to print some more Marvel themed ones to go with it. Also, I did get it connected to my phone after the initial print. Basically after that, I just had to power it off and back on and then boom, it showed up in my phone, no problem. Um, so if you see that issue, just give it a little reboot and then it's back in business. But yes, initial impressions, this thing is awesome. I got it out of the box and started printing cool multicolored stuff. I like it. Not half bad, any cubic. Thanks for watching guys. Uh, like and subscribe if you can and I will catch you next time.